Welcome everyone, this is Jake from Clarity Coders and today I'm on the Replit channel and I'm going to show you how you can build a Wordle clone from scratch in Python in just a few lines of code. Now a user already created this on Replit named Thomas34 or his username is Thomas34. I'm going to reference his code a little bit and I'm going to make some altercations and some improvements and I'm going to show you how it works and code it out with you line by line. Now typically if you were going to follow a project like this, I would suggest you find their project and then fork it and create it from there. But because I want to show you line from line, I'm actually going to create it from a blank REPL. Now assuming you clicked on this tutorial, so you probably know what Wordle is, so I'll be brief here. But if you haven't played Wordle before, you get six guesses to figure out what the five letter word is. So you can pick any word that has five letters, enter it and it's going to give you some information back. Yellow means those letters are in the word, but they're in the wrong spot. Green means they're in the exact right spot, and gray means they're not in the word at all. So as you go through, you can guess your word and figure out what today's Wordle is. Now there's only one Wordle a day in the official game. So in our game, we want the ability to replay and different things like that and maybe create our own word list. So we're gonna do that. So if you haven't signed up for a Replit account, go ahead and do that. It's free, it's easy to do get signed up and you should come to a screen that looks like this. We're going to create a new REPL, so I'm gonna hit the little plus button. And as a fun exercise, you could do this in any language after we're done because there's so many to choose from, but we're going to use the Python REPL. So I'm gonna click Python, and then you can name it whatever. I'm gonna call it Wordle Tutorial. All right, so now once you have your REPL created, you're going to come to a screen that looks like this. I'm gonna do some quality of life things for this tutorial, so I'm just gonna change my font to huge for right now. You don't have to do that, just so you guys can see it a little bit better. All right, so now this is a really short program, so we're just gonna have a few lines here, so I'm gonna make sure we can code along and understand everything that we're doing. The first thing we might wanna do is introduce the game, some type of a menu, tell them to start to play, that sort of thing. So let's just set up some simple print statements for our menu. So we can print something like, let's play Wordle. And then we can say the directions a little bit as well. So we can type a five letter word and hit enter. Awesome. We also might want to use this throughout our program a little bit. So we might want to use it more than once or something like that. So we could even put this in a function that's called print menu. And then whenever we have a function, remember in Python, the tabs matter, we're going to tab everything inside of there. And then at the start of our program, we can call that function. So we can say print menu. We use a function that way, if we want to extend this menu, make it more lines down the road or something like that, we'll be able to, to do that and not have to repeat eight print lines in a row or something like that. So we have our function now and we need a way for the game to pick a word. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our own database of words. So we can call it words.text. And down the road, I'm gonna show you how to create a lot more words automatically too if you don't want to enter them your on your own so we can give different words in here meanie a tone clone python is that oh that's too many letters let's just stick with those four for right now so we got our four words that we're going to pick from and now every time our game starts we want it to print the menu and then we want it to pick a word from our list of words. So let's create another function. So from here, we can call this read random word. Now we're gonna use a with function here. So we'll say with, or the with keyword here, and we're gonna open our file, and we're gonna open the file that we just created, words.txt. You'll see the nice autocomplete there pop up as well. So we're gonna open that as F. So now from here, we can break that into an array of all those different words. So remember we put each word on a separate line. So we can say our words is equal to F dot read. 
So this is gonna read in that file that we created. And then we can also do dot split lines. So this is gonna create a separate value in our array for each line in our file, which is an individual word. And then we need to return a random word from that array. So right now our array, if we look back to our words.txt is gonna be taxes, meanie, atone, and clone. We want it to pick a random word and that's going to be the word that our player is trying to guess. So anytime I need to select a random value from an array, I always import random. And then down here we can return a random choice from that array. So I'm gonna say random.choice and then I'm gonna pass in the words array. So of course, the cool thing about Python, it takes care of a lot of things for us. This random library is going to randomly choose a word and it's gonna give it back to us. Now, because we're using the return keyword here, when we call the function, we have to catch that in a variable. So the word, in this case, I'm gonna say equals, and you can use whatever variable you want here. So this word variable is gonna hold the, the word that we're trying to guess, that our player is trying to guess. So the word equals read random word. You see when it popped up there, I just hit tab to autocomplete. So now this is going to pull in a random word into this variable. And we can prove that by printing it out. So let's print out our word. If we run this program, we can see that it does grab a random word. If we run it again, it grabs a different word. Now we only have four words, so it might grab the same sometimes. And that's okay. So we're gonna use a couple other libraries in this as well. We're going to import sys, S-Y-S. That's going to allow us to clear the terminal and do some other things with it to make the game a little more user-friendly. And then to create the colors, we're gonna do from term color import colored. This is gonna allow us to color our values in the terminal and give that output to the user. So now we have to allow the user to guess. So we need to give them six guesses. So we're gonna say for a guess in, and in this case we can say for guess in the range of six. So this is going to execute six times, and inside of guess it's gonna store the value zero on the first time, one on the second time, two, so on and so forth, as we go through our guess. And this isn't actually going to be our guess. It's going to be the current attempt, we could say. Now, it's important to note that this is going to start at zero in this case. So if we do something like if you got it on your first guess and we wanted to print that out, it would actually say attempt zero instead of one. If we wanted to fix that, we could. We could say it starts at one and it goes until guess seven. Now this is a little tricky because this second number is exclusive. So we gotta go one over what we actually want to go to. So this is going to have an attempt one, two, three, four, five, and six because the seven is exclusive. Now we need to get the user's actual guess. So what we can do is we can create a variable to hold it and we can set that equal to input. Now what this is gonna do is our terminal is gonna wait for the user to enter a a value and hit enter on the console, and then it will store it inside of guess. Now, remember capitalization does matter when we're comparing, so if the user said a capital A and we compared it to a lowercase a, it would say those were not the same. We don't want that to be the case, so we're gonna change this all to lowercase. So no matter what the user enters, no matter what their capitalization structure is, we're gonna convert it all to lower. So now we need to go through all the letters in our guess. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that the user didn't enter more letters than what we wanna go through here. So in our for loop, we're gonna handle that. We're gonna say for i in range, and then inside of this range function, we're gonna do something a little tricky. We're going to use min, so that way, if the user enters like a 10 letter word, we don't wanna give them clues on all 10 letters because that's kind of cheating. We only want them to be able to guess up to five. So what we're gonna say is we're gonna take the length of whatever their guess is as the first option in our min function. 
And then the second option is going to be five. So how's that gonna work? Well, essentially, if they guess four, a four letter word, we're only gonna compare those four letters. But if they would guess a 10 letter word, it's gonna to default to this five and it's only going to give them output for the first five letters. This is still a little different than Wordle because they don't necessarily have to enter a valid word at this point, but we're keeping it simple for right now. So let's enter the colon and then we can start our comparison. So I is going to be a value. It's going to start at zero, which is going to be the first letter of our guess. So if they guess a tone, I is going to be zero, and we can say if our guess at index I. So in this case, if we guess the tone, our index I this first time would be zero, and that would be A. So if that equals our word at the same index, so if A is in the zero index of our guess, and A is in the zero index of our word that we chose for our game, we need to color it green, right? That means it's in the perfect spot. So we can say print colored, that's a function, so we're gonna call it with parentheses, and it takes in the parameters. You see Replit does a good job of explaining the different options and showing what we can add here. So the first thing we're gonna do is our text. So the text that we want it to print out is the guess letter. So we're gonna say guess, square brackets, I. Then comma, and we want to specify what color we want it to be. Well, in this case, we want it to be green. Now make sure you're going outside of this parenthesis, but inside of the closing parenthesis, and we're gonna put a comma. So this is an optional parameter in our print statement. So we're gonna say we don't want it to go to a new line after this. So we're gonna say our end equals and an open and close quote. What this is gonna do is it's going to print out our green letter if the guess is correct, but it's not gonna to go to a new line, so we can keep going through our other letters as well. Okay, so we're gonna do an else if. So if it's green, we want to color it green and leave it alone. So this is only gonna execute, this else if is only gonna execute if it's not green. So we can say guess at the I index is in our word. So what we're saying here is, our guess wasn't in the exact right position, but is it in our word? And if it is, we want to print out, color it again, our guess at index I. We want it to be green. Nope. We want it to be yellow. And then we want to do the same thing. So in between these two parentheses, we're gonna put a comma, end equals open and close quotes. Then finally, if it's neither of these, that means our letter isn't in the word at all, right? It's our gray option. So we can say else. Now remember, else conditions, they don't have, it's not a conditional, so there's no condition after that. It's just a bucket that catches all the remaining instances, all the remaining tests. So in this case, we just wanna print out the letter. So we can do guess at I, we don't have to use colored here because it's already gonna be white or gray or whatever. And we can just say end equals closing. Perfect. Now each time we guess, we also want to check if the guess is equal to our word. If the guess is equal to the word that our program has picked, we can print out, and we can even do this in colored if we want, we can print out congrats. You got the Wordle, Wordle in, and then we can post how many guesses. So I use F strings a lot, and how you do that in Python is you're going to put variables inside of these curly brackets, and you have to start an F string with an F. So then inside my curly brackets, I can put whatever I want, and I wanna put this I variable so we know how many guesses it took for us to get the answer. So if we guess our word right, it's going to print out, congrats, you got the Wordle in one try or two try or three tries or however many tries it is. Then we also want to color this, we can say red, just to be different. All right, so let's try this. So if we run this now, it's gonna automatically install our dependencies here, so this might take a second. And you can see our nice menu pops up. Now it's gonna tell us the answer here because I forgot to comment that out, but <laughs> I think. Well, maybe I did. So let's guess a tone. 
So you can see here that it has our output, the letters are colored and everything like that. It's a little messy here. You can see that I didn't go to the next line and a couple other things. So let's try, let's try only entering four letters. So you'll see it does still work for four letters and it didn't error out and that's because we use that minimum function. So it looks like we're doing pretty good here. I forgot what our words were so I don't know what my choices are here. Uh, it's got an A. So let's do taxes. Oh boy. So we did get it, but we have an issue, right? It printed out our congrats once for each letter. So this should not be inside of the for loop. So we got the for loop here. It's going to check for each letter. And then after it's done, we want to see if we got the word right. And if we did, if we did get the word right, we want to break out because we don't want to do any more guesses, right? Because we won. Okay, let's stop this. Let's run it again. And we can play again. We'll say meanie. And you'll notice my other mistake we made. We got it in four. Well, we didn't really get it in four we wanted to print our range up here. So we actually don't want this I variable to print out. We want it to be our attempt. So let's sub that out with attempt here. We'll run again. Just some common fun debugging we do here. So let's guess something that doesn't on the list. It's a tone and we can do meanie. And you'll see congrats, we got it in two guesses, which is correct. So this is still a little sloppy, right? Let's clean this up a little bit. So back in our main, we use this sys, but we never actually did anything with it. So after we get our guess, let's clean up our terminal a little bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do sys std out dot write, and then we're gonna enter a string here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do an escape sequence that moves our terminal pointer up, a pre up to the previous line. So what we're going to do is x1b, square bracket, 1a. So you can find these by Googling them, but essentially all we're doing is we're moving that cursor up. Now we're going to do another one, and we're going to replace 1a with 2k. Now what this should do, it should go up to the previous guess and then erase that so we can guess our word here. And we probably want to add a blank line after this print statement as well. So let's do slash n, which is the escape sequence for a new line. So we're gonna print out a new line after our menu. So let's try this one more time. So you see we got a nice new line here. Let's enter our word. We're gonna do a tone. Literally, I can't think of any other words. <laughs> so we got a tone, do meanie. Helper, let's stop this. Still not doing our, oh, let's try capital A here. A capital K. Let's stop this. Let's add another print statement after our for loop here. It's gonna print that to a new line. Let's run again. Awesome, that looks pretty good. After we guess and type it out, we then wipe out that line all together with our two sys.stdout.write commands. And then we reprint it with the colored version. Let's cheat again. Oh, maybe it is a tone. Bam, congrats. We got the Wordle in three guesses. So that's right as well. So it looks pretty good now. You'll notice though, we're only playing one game. We might want to play more games and we also might want to use words outside of this library. So let's add something up here. Let's say play underscore again equals, we can just do a blank line. We can say while play again does not equal Q for quit. Then we can do colon. 
And we can tab all of this inside. And then we can ask at the end, we can say play again equals input. Want to play again? Type Q to exit. Awesome. So now we got that inside our while loop. We can run. We can do a tone. Meanie. Clone. Oh my goodness. Clone. And taxes. And you can see, congrats, we got it right. Do you want to play again? Now you can hit any button to play again. And you should be ready to go again. Although I did pick the same Wordle. We don't want it to do that. So let's move this line inside our while loop. And now we should be good to go. All right, let's stop this and we'll add another way to get a bunch of words into the game. All right, so we're gonna add in another library that's gonna allow us to pull in a ton more words and not have to make our own text file. So we're gonna import NLTK dot, actually let's just do import NLTK and then import NLTK dot corpus import words. So what this is gonna do, this is a uh, library that you can use for a lot of different things word analysis or AI or different things like that, but we're going to realize what I did here. This should be from. We're going to use this to find a bunch of five letter words. So we can create a new function. We can find, call it NLTK random word. Then from this, we can actually pick another random word. So before we do that, let's just enter pass for right now. Before we do that, let's set up that word list. So what we want to do is we want to do nltk.data.path.append. And this is just going to be where we put the list of words. We're going to do slash work slash words. Now from that, we can create a list of words. So our word list equals words dot words so this is all the words now we only want five letter words right so we're going to do we're going to call this words five we can set that equal to and we can use some list comprehension here so we're going to create a list and we're going to use word so we're going to say for word in our word list so that's from above if the length of the word equals five, we're gonna add it into our list. So what are we doing? We're going through the entire word list. If the length of the word equals five, then we're putting it inside of our words five list. Now, we actually don't need a function. Let's take this out. We'll just keep this as simple as possible. So now we could get our read random word from our library. This, this would grab it from the text file, this line I commented out, or we could get our word from words, oops, random.choice, and we can pass in words underscore five. So now this should give us a random word. Now I have noticed if we get this wrong, we don't ever tell the user what the word was. So we want to do that here. Let's say elif attempt equals six. So what this is saying is if our guess equals our word, then we're going to print out congrats. Else if, if it's attempt six, that means we've guessed as many times as we're going to get. So I'm going to say print. Sorry, the wordle was. Then we can use curly brackets. Remember, we got to make this an F string we can say word, whatever our word was. So let's run this again. And it doesn't have NLTK. We can go to packages. We can search for NLTK. 
You see that they have it over here. Let's put the plus and add that into our project. This might take a minute to resolve. We'll let that finish. And it looks like NLTK was successfully installed. So let's try and run this again. You can see it wants us to download the words here. We can do nltk.download words. Run again. You can see it looks like it worked here. Okay, so let's try this. Let's say piles, tone, taxes, clammy, test, and wordle. Is it weird that it's not a, that wordle is a six letter word? <laughs> Worder. And you can see we got it wrong. It prints out the word that it was supposed to be and it says, do you want to play again? We can hit enter and play again. And hopefully we get a new word this time. I'm just gonna enter some stuff. And you can see the wordle was craps. <laughs> The S was in the exact right spot. The A was in the wrong spot, but it was in the word. So it looks like this is working correctly. Type Q to exit, type Q, and we get out of it. So what we did here is we took someone else's project, we rewrote it line by line, and in the description, we'll put the forked version of this so you can see where the original project was and some of our additions to it. So the additions we made, was using an entire library of words and allowing you to play multiple times. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave us a comment below about any tutorials you would like to see in the future. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Until next time, keep coding.